Well, I don't think we truly can imagine what Yulia Vitali and her son have, have gone through. You know, we here in the U.S. at least live in a country where, you know, we have certain values that we hold dear and true, rule of law, freedom of speech, freedom to assemble. Um, for her to take the decision to stand up against a corrupt system and the bosses that she referenced is just simply amazing. And I think she did it all for the good of clean athletes around the world. And, and as the video alludes to, you know, her decision to stand up for clean sport was at tremendous risk to her and her family and, and tremendous cost. She literally had to leave, as it says in the video, her home country of Russia and bring her family with her. You know, she's been attacked in Russia, sued in Russia, and has taken on, you know, great risk to both her personal safety and security to expose a, a corrupt system that now we know by four reports that have been published on the Russia state supported doping system abused its own athletes. And I don't think you can describe it in, in any other way. It abused its own athletes, including Yulia. It robbed the world's athletes, and not just US athletes, but athletes from around the world on the largest global scale, the Olympic Games and, and numerous editions of those Olympic Games. And I think it polluted sport in a way that we've never seen before. You know, on the good side, in the dar this dark and really sordid affair, she and what she stood up for is a true inspiration and is a true light for all of us who care about fair play, about athletes' rights, about athletes' health and safety, and, and always standing up and speaking out to do the right thing on behalf of clean athletes and clean sport. So with that, please help me in showing our appreciation to Yuli Yulia Stepanova and her husband Vitali and son Robert. So Yulia, if you want to come up. Thank you. My name is Yulia Stepanova. Please let me read my short message to you as my English is not very good yet. Thank you very much for recognizing my family's effort to fight doping in sport. First, I want to apologize for my athletics past. Unfortunately, I cannot change my past. I was in the Russian doping system. I used doping and now I am talking about it. In the beginning of 2013, I wrote a 10 page statement to VADA describing every substance prohibited and not prohibited that I took during my sport career. I will gladly provide this statement to anyone in the audience so you can understand how bad the cheating was in Russia. Not every athlete is able to tell the truth about themselves. I did it. When I was sanctioned, Vitaly, my husband, helped me to see the world, world, world through different eyes. Vitaly offered me a choice. We could try to fight the system together, or I could act like most of my teammates did cry a little and continue to listen to the lies of the Russian sport officials. Most athletes in Russia do not have such choice. I want to continue to run and, and compete without doping. I do not want to lie and listen to lies again. The Russian doping system does not hate people that stay in the system and get caught. It hates people that try to fight the system. And we decided to fight it. I knew that we would be traitors to Russia, but we felt that we are doing the right thing. 
I hope that in the future athletics competition in the Russia and around the world become fair. We really appreciate all the support we have received from anti-doping organization, athletes, the IOC, the IAAF, the media, and so many people around the world. Thank you. Thank you for this award. It means a lot to our family. Um, um, my name is Vitaly Stepanov. Um, thank you for inviting us. Uh, one of the shocking things that I and Yulia learned in the past is the difference between a member of the Russian track and field team and an athlete who is trying to become a member of the national team. Um, three to five chosen members of the national team in each event could compete completely dirty at, at the national championships as the main goal was to make sure that those athletes are clean two, three weeks later when major international competitions were happening. Um, Yulia could do EPO injection and testosterone injection on the day of the competition, then compete well in national championships then go to doping control station, act normal, provide the sample, and right after leaving the doping control station, send a text message to Mr. Portugalov, at that time the head of the Russian Athletics Medical Commission, who was forwarding those sample numbers to the director of the lab. And there was no positive sample. As simple as that. The director of the lab and the Russian anti-doping agency, with the approval of the Russian Ministry of Sports, did not report to WADA about those samples. And there were hundreds of positives just in athletics that were never reported. The work of scientists, just like the work of clean athletes, is pointless if sports politicians turn a blind eye on doping and do not punish anti-doping rule violations. And that's unfortunately what's been happening and continues to happen in Russia. Um, we are glad that the doping situation in Russia is being discussed globally and we feel that we are in a fight that is not over yet. And again, we are thanking you for the support you've given to us. The best part for us over the past few years was to learn that there are people that care about fair competition. We just wish those people were louder and stronger because clean athletes need to see it and feel it. Thank you. Um, um, and, and, and again, thank you um, again for recognizing my wife's effort to change and to fight doping. I guess if there are any questions, questions we'll be happy to answer. I mean, I think I speak for all of us in that we're all here to fight doping and that we look for inspiration like you gave to help us continue the fight on our end. So I think for me personally, it's a thank you to everybody else here. Yeah, thank you both very, very much. Um, I have a quick question. Do you feel more encouraged about the situation in, in Russia now? I mean, do you feel that in the next couple of years there will be uh, a real commitment towards cleaning, cleaning up sport? Um, unfortunately, we don't feel that. We don't see that. Sports are being run by the same people that, in my personal view, should be banned from sports for life.
they're still running sports saying that they're changing things. There's been no, no real punishment yet. Thank you very much. As I look at your son here, I know how proud he will be over the years. Uh, and all of us thank you as well. Uh, have you had uh, support from other Russian athletes, uh, even indirectly, uh, for your courageous efforts? The reality that in, in Russia, uh, I guess a, a lot of athletes are they, they are smart. They understand if if they go against the system, they they will be fired from their jobs. They will no no longer to be able to be part of the national team. Um, well, um, the, 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 the another part that makes it even more difficult for us, uh, how corrupt the system is, um, Yulia was actually was employed by the police. She was a, uh, she worked in, in, in the law enforcement, but really all she was doing just competing for her regional police uh, two times per year. The competitions were happening at the times when it's good to, to dope to prepare for, for national championships, for international competitions. So at those competitions, police competitions, uh, most of the athletes were completely doped. And nobody cared, police. Um, they did start to care once the documentary came out in 2014. Uh, a little bit later, they called us and, and they said, uh, we had a tough talk with the Russian Ministry of Sports and with the Russian Athletics Federation, and they told us to fire you, to fire Yulia. Um, to which I just made one comment, so that's how it works in Russia. The, the police is being controlled by the Russian Ministry of Sports and the uh, Russian Athletics Federation. You're not going to investigate. And of course, the person whom I asked, he didn't answer anything because that's how it works, unfortunately. Um, there are a few athletes that are trying to blow whistle as well, even right now that things are, are not really changing. But unfortunately, just like us, they are not getting much support. What do you think needs to happen to change the system, and how do you think the rest of us in the community can help? answer was that obviously the big reason for this to happen is, is uh, c coaches they are like parents to to most of the athletes in Russia and probably in any other country so athletes just don't do anything that a uh, coach wouldn't want them to do a coach wouldn't want them to do and um, and coaches in Russia they they believe that the only method to achieve high results, to win gold medals, is, is doping. Um, so all those generations of coaches must be gone. I, I will add that it's not just the generations of coaches that must be gone, but probably sports officials as well, and probably not just in, in Russia, but in others, well, in, in sports governing, governing bodies because I, I wish I could say that I feel that there is a zero tolerance to doping approach, but I don't, I don't feel that. <laughs> Even in the case, you know, how they treated Yulia, when first they decided that for her, her whistleblowing she should be sanctioned additionally, twice, once by the IAAF and then and by the IOC, 
So, but that's you know we went through that part. Hopefully, hopefully something is changes is changing. It's going to take some time, and you know we are trying our best. Uh, like all of us, thank you so much. It's really an honor to have you here. Um, almost all of the other past doping scandals have involved physicians, doctors being involved, such as East German uh, state-sponsored doping. And as a physician, I was just wondering to uh, Yulia if uh, uh, doctors were participating in this, um, in your doping as well. Well, in, in Russia, there were two levels, which I mentioned. The, the, the part where you try to become a member of the national team, that's where basically you don't have money yet, and all you have is your coach, who, who is not a scientist, who knows nothing about uh, medicine, but he heard some things somewhere, so let's just try it. So in a lot of cases, athletes are just like a guinea, guinea pigs. And if, uh, yeah, if those coaches and athletes are lucky enough to get through that stage, they get to the national team where there is a doctor, the one who supposed, well, was a doctor, the one who was supposedly fighting doping, making sure that there is no doping in the national team. You go to him and he tells you, you take this, this and this. Uh, the, the best ones are, you know, steroids and EPO. Uh, we'll make sure that your samples are covered up, that you don't test positive. And uh, yeah, just listen to us and you'll never be sanctioned. And then at some point, uh, at least in Yulia's case, uh, something went wrong and, and she got sanctioned. And uh, you know, I'd like to believe that they, you know, uh, it, it will bring a big change. <laughs> 